George, the Drummer Boy George was a drummer boy with the King's soldiers. They were stationed in Boston. Two hundred years ago, Boston belonged to England. The Boston people did not like the taxes the king made them pay. Since they could not show their anger to the king, they showed it to his soldiers. George wanted to be friends with the people, but it was hard to be friends. All they did was shout and throw things at the soldiers. A spy told the British commander, people are hiding cannon and gunpowder in Concord. Concord was a town about 20 miles from Boston. The commander, General Cage, decided to send troops out to capture all the cannon and powder they could find. He made his plans in secret, so the people would be taken by surprise. First, he picked two companies of soldiers and said they were going to have special training. George's company was one of these. When he heard the news, he went to see his friend Fred. What does it mean, he asked. No idea, Fred replied. Why not ask someone, said George. In the army, you don't ask questions, Fred said. You do as they tell you. Next, General Gage had men fix the barges and long boats. Maybe this means we go to sea, said George, said. I hope not, said Fred, unless, of course, they take us home. Three nights later, after the soldiers had gone to bed, they were wakened and told to get dressed. What kind of training is this? George asked. Do they want us to play owls? Don't ask, said Fred. Just dress. The moon was bright. They could see the barges that would take them across the water. George had his drum, but since they were told to be quiet, he didn't use it. He just waited to see what would happen next. They crowded into the boats and barges and were rowed across the Char Charles River to Charleston. It was early spring and the wind from the east was cold. George sat close to Fred to keep warm. In Charlestown, they waded ashore through water up to their knees and then they waited. They waited for two hours, standing around shivering in the cold. Behind them in Boston, George saw two lights in the spire of the Old North Church. I wonder what they mean, he said. Most likely they're a signal, said Fred. What for? asked George. The general hasn't told me, Fred said. George was too cold to laugh. At last they started to march. Major Pitcairn was in charge of George's company. He told them they were going to Concord to look for hidden guns and powder. George sneezed. Shh, said Fred. You'll wake the countryside after a while they could hear. <laughs> after a while they could hear the bottom of cannon in the distance. Far off, church bells were ringing. Dim shapes of running men went by them in the dark. They heard the thud of horses' hooves. I think they know we're coming, George said. I told you not to sneeze so loud, said Fred. Big joke, said George. I'm scared. Those lights we saw, said George. They must have been a signal. We were on our way. That's right, Fred replied. This may turn out to be a long day. Slowly, day began to break. Birds chirped and twittered in the trees. When it was light enough, George could see blossoms on the apple trees beside the road. He could also see the town of Lexington and men hurrying toward it across the fields. They were 80 minute men on the green. They were called minute men because they had to be ready at a minute's notice. They had guns. All George had was his drum. He hoped there would not be a fight. When the Minutemen saw how many soldiers there were, they started to move away. Major Pitcairn told his soldiers not to fire. He shouted at the people to disperse, then moved his men in closer. Someone, somewhere, fired a shot. Nobody was hit, but it started the soldiers shooting. They fired three volleys, then broke ranks and ran at the Minutemen. Major Pitcairn got his men back in order. 
he marched them off toward Concord. Eight minute men had been killed. It had happened so fast that George had no time to be afraid. In Concord, there were more Minutemen waiting on a hill across the, a bridge. There were more than at Lexington, and still more were coming every minute. George began to wonder what he was doing there. I wish I was back in Boston, he told Fred. Me too, said Fred. I don't like this place one little bit. All the guns and powder had been taken out of Concord and hidden someplace else. George saw some soldiers setting a fire. What are they doing that for, he asked. They have to do something, Fred replied. They can't come all this way for nothing. It seems pretty silly to me, said George. The Minutemen saw the smoke and thought the town was being burned. They charged down the hill at the soldiers, and the soldiers turned and fled. I knew that was a bad idea, George said as he ran. Look what they started. By now, the Minutemen were all around. They fired from behind fences and stone walls and picked the soldiers off as they ran. It seemed to George that everywhere he looked, a Minuteman was pointing a gun at him. Fred shouted and dropped his gun. A bullet had hit him in the arm. Are you all right? George asked. Ask me later, Fred replied. This is no time for talk. George picked up the gun and kept on running. At Lexington, they met more British soldiers who had come out from Boston to help. These soldiers had two cannons, which kept the Minutemen away until the others could escape. It was dark and raining by the time they got back to Charlestown. Nobody knew or cared that this was the start of the revolution. When it was over, America would be a country of its own. All George and the others wanted was to get back safely to Boston. It had been, as Fred said it might be, a long day. The End